Warning. This presentation contains controversial truths and is likely to be taken down by the government at any moment. Watch it while you still can. Hi, you can call me Buck. And in this presentation, I'm going to reveal recent news events that will change life in America as we know it, making it absolutely vital that you know how to protect your family. So keep watching. You may have heard about Obama's so-called deal with Iran, the one that's supposed to protect us by limiting Iran's ability to make nuclear bombs. But that's completely and utterly a lie. Why? Because it doesn't shut down their nuclear program. It doesn't shut down their reactors. And it doesn't break apart their centrifuges. All it does is lift their trade sanctions in exchange for an honest promise that they won't do anything bad. Can you believe Obama bought this? He even said himself that Iran is only two or three months away from acquiring the raw materials for a nuclear bomb. Worst of all, Iran's nuclear program is more dangerous than Russia, China, and North Korea's combined. Keep watching, and I'll tell you exactly why. Iran is an axis of evil country. They've already broken every political agreement they made with anyone. They built their Fordow nuclear site illegally, breaking their last official agreement. What makes anyone believe they'll keep their word now? Oh, and they built that facility under a mountain so that no one can destroy it. It seems too important to them. Why hide and fortify the facility if it's for peaceful research? You and I both know the answer. It's not. Obama's New Deal lets Iran keep that facility, even though it's their prime research site for nuclear weapons. All we get in return is another empty promise that they'll only use it for peaceful purposes. Yeah, right. In previous agreements, we had more control and more safety measures. Our inspection teams could check on suspect assembly and storage sites, making sure they're safe and that they're not being used for weapons research. But the New Deal forbids surprise inspections. Instead, Iran can schedule whenever it's convenient for them so that they can hide any incriminating evidence before inspectors see it. In March, Yukiya Amato, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, tried to inspect a number of suspect sites in Iran. He's the principal international inspector for verification that countries are honoring the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. In a report he published on March 23rd, he blew the whistle on Iran's real intentions. Iran refused to let him inspect their nuclear facilities. If that's not a big red warning about Iran's evil intentions, I don't know what is. In fact, it looks to me like the president has sold us out to our enemies, to his friends fighting to establish Islamic Sharia law all over the world. It's called the Islamic Republic of Iran for a reason. Soon, they'll easily be able to attack us with nuclear weapons at their convenience, most likely fused to create a high-altitude electromagnetic pulse, HEMP, because then they can take us out with one good hit. When that happens, it will be the biggest TSHTF of our modern times putting our country back hundreds of years, essentially destroying our civilization completely. It's personally important to me that this message gets out, so that we stop this threat in its beginnings. That's why my story, which I'll share with you over the next few minutes, becomes very relevant. Like I said, you can call me Buck. That's not my real name, which I can't share because I've received serious threats to my life and my family if I ever revealed what I'm about to reveal in this presentation. I'm just an average guy, but with a lot of life experience. I've been an engineer, an army officer, a manager in industry, and I've owned my own business. I even spent a stint as a missionary serving overseas. And now this experience turned out to be vital to protect me and my family from the effects of this Iran deal. I've been a survivalist since the 70s. Back then there was a threat of a thermonuclear war between the United States and the Soviet Union. I was living in the Denver area at the time, about two miles west of the Federal Center, one of the many prime targets for the Soviet Union's intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs. I was young, but I wasn't stupid. I decided I didn't want life to end in a nuclear fireball, so I made an efficient plan to head into the Colorado Rockies if the missiles ever started flying. I'd only need 30 minutes to get over the first mountain ridge, which would have been enough to save my life. After that, I'd make my way high up into the mountains and live off the land. That's when my studies of survival started, and they've never stopped since. I've kept studying survival, learning new skills, and honing the old ones, and I'm so glad I did. With the current risks we face from Iran, ISIS, and hordes of other extremely dangerous groups in the world, I'm convinced that I'll be needing my expertise very soon. You see, we're facing the most dangerous times we've ever faced as a nation. When we were in the Cold War, we at least had an enemy who was as afraid of being destroyed as we were. Now? Well, I'm not so sure. All the signs show that there are many countries and terrorist organizations who are scheming to launch a devastating attack against us with a terrifying technology. They could literally win the war with one shot, leaving our country on its knees. That's what I'm worried Iran is going to do, and soon. Iran has stood against the United States since 1979, when the Ayatollah Khomeini, then Iran's spiritual and governmental leader, 
first called the United States the Great Satan and taught his people the oft-heard chant of death to America. This is the same country that has supported many terrorist organizations, including Hezbollah, Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and some even say ISIS. While they may or may not support ISIS, it's clear that they support terrorism, especially when it's directed at the United States or Israel. When we defeated Iraq in 2003, Iran was there in the background. Four years later, General David Petraeus, the commander of American forces in Iraq, said, I do believe that Iran has gone beyond merely striving for influence in Iraq and could be creating proxies to actively fight us. While Secretary of State John Kerry was triumphantly announcing his great success in brokering the nuclear deal with Iran, the Iranian Supreme Leader, Ali Khamenei, was chanting with his people, Death to America. How could anyone trust the current deal when the other side is celebrating in the streets, chanting for our destruction? My own digging convinced me that any country involved in nuclear research is never doing so for purely peaceful reasons. They may claim to be researching nuclear medicine or nuclear power, but they're really after one thing, the nuclear bomb. Think about it. Why would a third world country need to research better x-ray machines? They'd save millions of dollars by buying the technology and medicine from more advanced countries. And the sad truth about nuclear power plants is that they're another way of hiding a nuclear weapons program. Countries have built reactors from enriching plutonium and disguised them as nuclear power plants. While everyone in the know can tell the difference, it's enough of a disguise to hide it from the average politician. And we already know Iran is hiding their nuclear program. That's why they built their Fordow site underground. If we know they're hiding one research site, it's likely they've got underground sites we don't even know about. After all, you can only see the tip of the iceberg. Actually, we already have intel on other underground sites. The National Council of Resistance of Iran revealed the existence of another site called Lavazan 3. This one is also underground, sited on a military base for added security. According to the information they gave, Iran has been using the second site for years to enrich weapons-grade uranium, breaking their past agreements by using centrifuges even more advanced than the ones they agreed to put into storage. If you listen to Obama's April 2nd speech about the agreement, he doesn't say one word about ending Iran's nuclear weapons program. He doesn't think we can. He only talks about slowing it down. So he went into the recent negotiations not to stop Iran, but merely buy time so that we can be ready to react once they produce a nuclear weapon. Uh, considering that we don't know what they're doing now, what makes him think we'll know in the future? In other words, it's already clear that Iran has no intention to obey the agreement. The only question is, how quickly will they be able to produce weapons? Moreover, who are they going to be aiming those weapons at? Does Iran have enemies that are threatening it? No. They have the largest military in the Middle East. They're the ones threatening others. So their nuclear weapons program isn't defensive, but offensive. They're taking aim at Israel and the United States, both countries that Iranian leadership has threatened to destroy. Israel understands this threat and has already reacted to it. In 1981, they destroyed an Iranian nuclear reactor that was under construction. In 2011, they destroyed a heavy water reactor in the Iranian city of Iraq. In 2013, another nuclear facility in Iran was at least partially destroyed by a covert operation by the Israeli military. Then in 2014, it was revealed that Israeli hackers were taking control of Iranian nuclear facilities through their computer systems and shutting them down. So if Israel, who is close to the action and has a lot more accurate information than we do, has their top scientists, hackers, and special forces taking down Iranian nuclear sites, why is Obama pretending there's no threat? Why is he abandoning our allies and leaving us open for attack? So, how could a small country like Iran destroy a country the size of the United States? It's pretty obvious that we can rule out a full-blown nuclear attack, with Iran sending city busters to blow up our major population centers, since once they set off one bomb, we'd level them. But that's the problem. They could destroy us with just one nuclear bomb. It's because of an effect of nuclear bombs you might have heard of, called an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP to further protect themselves against EMP. So you're saying that, essentially, just for our viewers, that, you know, some of the, the most important uh, resources in our government are identifying this threat and acting on it by moving into this mountainous area so they can be protected because the threat is so serious. Yes. An electromagnetic pulse is a normal result of any nuclear detonation. Back in the Cold War, we didn't worry about it much because the heat and blast would take out just about everything, leaving little for the EMP to attack. Besides, an EMP doesn't do as much damage from a low-altitude burst as it does from a high-altitude one. The thing is, when a nuclear bomb is set off in the atmosphere, the EMP isn't really all that big. But when that same nuclear bomb is set off above the atmosphere, say about 20 miles above the Earth's surface, there's no air to absorb the energy released by the bomb. Without that, there's really no blast wave and hardly any heat wave to be concerned about. Most of the bomb's energy goes out as electromagnetic radiation. These are so-called high-altitude electromechanical pulse, H-E-M-P. 
When that electromagnetic radiation hits the Earth's upper atmosphere, something called the Compton Effect kicks in. I'll save you the detailed nuclear physics explanation. Anyway, the Compton Effect multiplies the EMP, making it more powerful. And here's why Iran's nuclear program is more dangerous than Russia, China, and North Korea's combined. Russia has been building nuclear bombs for decades. So has China. And since North Korea is supported by China, we can assume they have advanced nukes too. Their bombs are high-tech and stable. They're designed to be launched by missiles across oceans, and they want them to arrive in one piece. Iran, on the other hand, is new to the nuclear game. They don't have the technology to create high-tech stable nuclear missiles. Their nukes will be unstable, and when it comes to nuclear technology, unstable means dangerous. The more unstable, the more powerful the explosion. Advanced nuclear bombs are designed to take out a single city. Most world leaders aren't interested in wiping out entire countries. Iran, on the other hand, funds terrorism. They've called for both Israel and the U.S. to be wiped off the map. So they want unstable nuclear bombs. An Iranian nuke set off high in the atmosphere could send out an EMP that affects half the globe. Think about that for a second. When all that electrical energy hits the Earth's surface, it's far more powerful than the strongest lightning bolt. Basically, it fries all solid-state electronics that it reaches. Just so you know, solid-state electronics are exactly what they sound like. Devices built entirely from solid materials, and where the electric current stays inside that solid material. That means most electronics built in the last 40 years, including computers, cell phones, stereos, radios, you name it, if it has solid-state electronics in it, it's dead. Then there's the second whammy from the EMP. Just in case any electronic equipment survived the first, the electrical grid acts as a huge antenna, attracting and absorbing the EMP in an electrical surge that is much larger than the systems are designed to deal with. This flows down the power lines, frying transformers as it goes. Getting to homes and offices, it fries surge protectors before going on to destroy any electronic equipment connected to it. So even if the equipment is protected, it will still be completely destroyed. Then the EMP apocalypse starts. On that day, the first any of us notice an EMP attack is that the power is out. We try to use something and it doesn't work. No working electronic devices, no cell phones, and no portable electronics. All fried. If you're driving, your car suddenly stalls without reason. Everything just stops working, and we don't know why. We cannot see the explosion since it happens so high, especially during the daytime. People don't realize what's happening. At first, they think it's a normal power outage, and they wait for the power to come back on. They blame the batteries for their phone not working, and they think that their car just broke down. It takes time for them to understand that something more sinister is going on. Can you imagine that? Your neighbors all standing around outside, talking about the weird things happening. Not one of them thinks of an EMP, because they're not trained to think that way. They think that a truck hit a power pole or something else happened, which will be fixed in short time, getting the power back on. Only you and me know that the power won't be coming back on. Really, it will be years of suffering before the power comes back on. You see, the transformers that are used in the substations are custom-made and take over a year to build. The controls for the power plants are all custom-built as well. The power won't be coming on because all of those sensitive electronics have to be remade from scratch, since any backups will be fried by the EMP too. A few simpler electronics may survive, but you can't tell without the grid providing power. They are essentially worthless without electricity. Everything that's controlled by electronics stops working. There are no gas pumps working. Stores aren't able to sell anything. All communications is down, and the city water is shut down as well. Whatever money people have in the bank is gone, because most of it is just electronic records in the bank's computer memory. Without the computer working, that money doesn't exist. Some days pass before the average unprepared person realizes that the power isn't going to come back on. That's when the panic sets in. They mob the grocery stores, getting whatever they can, looting whatever they can. From the grocery store lootings, panic spreads. People invade convenience stores, hardware stores, liquor stores, and even electronic stores, not realizing those electronics are fried inside. Stores everywhere are ransacked, and everything that might be useful for survival is stolen. The average person is unprepared for any real emergency. They have somewhere between three days and a week's worth of food in their homes. Their emergency supplies are mostly a flashlight, an extra blanket, and a bag of charcoal for the grill. Without the infrastructure we depend on to provide our needs, many people die. Then, people start dying in waves. Disaster experts have laid out five waves of death that will sweep through the country. First, we lose the sick and elderly. There are many people in our modern society who can't survive without medicines. Without their medicines, their bodies can't keep going. Everyone from diabetics to people with severe mental problems start to die off when they run out of meds. The second wave of deaths is caused by disease. Without running water and water treatment, human waste disposal becomes a problem. 
triggering an epidemic that sweeps through populations. Many die of diseases that America's doctors haven't had to deal with for generations. Without their modern laboratories, hospitals, and medicines, doctors are limited in what they can do, forced to leave many to die, who they could have saved a few short months earlier. Third, food becomes scarce, and starvation rages across the country. FEMA stockpiles will only feed people for a few days. With high-tech farm equipment wiped out, food will rot on farms, uneaten, while people a few hundred miles away die from hunger. Only the small farmers will be able to keep their crops alive, and that'll only be enough to keep their families alive. Many pets die a slow death when there's nobody there to feed them or let them loose. Children get frail and starve, while their parents weep because they can't provide. The fourth wave of deaths comes with the winter, combining starvation with a lack of heat. Many freeze to death that first winter, with nobody to mourn their agonizing demise or to give them a decent burial. Those who are still alive are too weak to take care of the dying let alone bury the dead in a ground that is frozen rock hard. With rampant famine and disease, society will break down. That's when the fifth and final phase of deaths hits, and it's the worst to think about. Men will start roaming the streets, going from house to house, preying on each other, stealing what they want and forcing their will on others. Rape will become commonplace, as women are forced to sell their bodies for food. And before you say that no woman you know would ever do that, ask yourself if there's anything they wouldn't do to put food in their starving children's bellies. Desperate people do terrible things. Some people will even turn to cannibalism, eating the flesh of other human beings, seeing it as being a better alternative than dying. Gangs, criminals, and warlords will rise up, using force to steal and murder. There will also be religious cults that rise up, following one who says that he has a message from God, or even from Satan, about how this is all caused by our sin or lack of sin. Either way, the message and the messenger are all false, merely a way to manipulate the masses, to take advantage of the situation, with all these people preying on each other, the world becomes a nightmare. By the end of the first year, an estimated 90% of our population has died. Seeing how careless and unprepared more than 90% of people are, it doesn't sound unreasonable. Those that are left have reverted back to the agricultural hard life of a century or more ago. Some moved from their homes into other places, where they can raise their own food, while others turn their homes into homesteads. Some smaller communities pull together, pooling their resources and working together to survive, but these are rare. In most cases, people simply die of horrible deaths. Only those few who are prepared will survive this EMP attack. Many people expect the government to take care of them, and so they turn a blind eye to the dangers out there, especially the chief danger of an EMP attack by Iran. The sheeple are the ones who end up dying off in that first year. They believe in a group of incompetents and crooks called government that are not even prepared themselves to survive an EMP event. What makes them think that the government will be able to protect them? All we have to do is remember how ineffective the government is in dealing with disasters. When Hurricane Katrina hit, the government didn't save the people of New Orleans from the flood, from the following disease, or from the following social chaos of gangs or murderers and rapists. Seven years later, when Hurricane Sandy hit the East Coast, FEMA didn't even do one little bit better. The liberal media tried to hide this as much as they could to save Obama's face. However, we real patriots know the truth. Those were just smaller-scale regional events, not even dealing with a whole state. Think of how badly FEMA screwed up with these regional disasters, letting people drown, die of thirst, and even get murdered by thugs and gangs. Now imagine that happening in every city, town, and county in the country. Even worse, an EMP will knock out all the equipment FEMA depends on, so it'll be worse than ever. The best we can expect out of FEMA is to open up some relocation camps, more like concentration camps, and move people into them. But what then? FEMA might have millions of meals of emergency food stored in warehouses, but they still don't have enough to feed everyone. There's no way that they can. After they run out, which should only take a day or two, they'll be going door to door to steal your stockpiles to give to government officials and other important people. So the wise decision is not to trust the government to take care of you and your family. Truth is, if you see a government agent in a post-EMP world, run in the opposite direction. They'll be there to take what you have, not to help you out. When an EMP hits our country, we could pretty much count on everything that relies on electricity going out. That would put our country back 100 years or more, back to the time of our great-great-great-grandparents. Well, if they could live without electrical power and all the things that use it, then it should be possible for us to live without them too. I decided I wasn't going to give up, lie down, and give in to an EMP attack and the following chaos. I decided to make a plan of how to survive without electricity and how to keep my family safe from the collapse a nationwide blackout will trigger. This wasn't easy as we're so accustomed to using electricity for everything. We're also used to having a huge supply chain, which brings everything we need right to our doorstep. 
None of that is going to be available. I knew I needed to figure out three things. One, how to keep my family fed, warm, and healthy without electricity. Two, how to make sure an EMP event will do the least amount of damage to my electronics and how to generate my own power once the grid is destroyed. And three, how to survive the social chaos and violence that will follow an EMP event as money disappears, grocery store shelves go bare, and people start panicking. My first step was to find the best example of people who live without electricity. I first thought of the Amish. They plant and harvest crops, build houses, and get by entirely without electrical power, right? Wrong. While most people think the Amish don't use any technology or electricity, the truth is that they only avoid public power. They still use batteries or generators to power home lighting, appliances like washing machines, and all sorts of equipment for their farms and businesses. Now, I'm not judging them for using power. They're not doing anything wrong. It's just that people have the wrong idea about them. Once I discovered the truth, I realized that the Amish are almost as vulnerable to an EMP attack as the rest of the country. So it wouldn't make sense to go live with them to learn how to survive a nationwide blackout. I had to continue my search for a real example of 100% electricity-free survival. But I'll tell you what, I'm not sure it exists anymore. Even in tiny communities in the mountains in South America or deep in Africa, people still use electronics powered by generators. It's like our entire species has become dependent on electrical power. Fortunately, I'd recently found my grandfather's journal in my attic. I was reading it to get a better appreciation for how people lived back when America had values. Reading about my grandfather's life on the farm, I realized something. The 1920s farmer is the perfect example of survival without electricity. Think about it. Between 1900 and 1930, electricity made its way into just about every home, and we started relying on it for everything from farming to manufacturing to banking. Everything. But it didn't just magically show up in every home all at once. Electricity obviously requires power plants and lines, a big infrastructure. So the first areas to get plugged in were the cities, then the suburbs and smaller towns. But throughout the 1920s, rural areas still didn't have electricity. Farmers still depended on their own hard work and ingenuity. They provided for their families with their own two hands. The 1920s was the best decade in history for electricity-free survival strategies. We had thousands of years of ingenuity and invention leading up to it. Then in the 1930s, the power companies stretched out to the farms, and people stopped improving electricity-free farming strategies and started relying on electrical power. Once I realized this, I knew I'd found the answer. Our grandfathers had the solution to surviving an EMP attack. I dove into my research. I found agricultural history books that gave me an overview of what they did. I found farming manuals that were published back in the 1920s. I studied every account of farming and farming techniques that I could find. And it didn't just cover growing crops or caring for animals. There's more to survival than that, both in the 1920s and in a post-blackout USA. I learned how our grandfathers treated injuries and sickness, made and mended clothes, dealt with human waste, protected themselves from wild animals, built sturdy shelters, and so much more. I knew I had the foundation of surviving a post-blackout USA. Of course, I wasn't finished. Obviously, our grandfathers didn't face all the issues we'll be facing after an EMP attack. If I was going to be truly prepared, I needed to know more than just how to survive without electrical power. I also wanted to keep as many of my electronics alive as possible. After all, a good two-way radio can save your life. I called manufacturers and did my own research to determine which of my electronics are vulnerable solid-state devices and which might survive an EMP. I ended up with a detailed list so I know exactly what needs to be stored safely. And of course, I had to figure out how to store my critical electronics safely so that they would be protected from the EMP and available for use to help my family and I survive. I spent months in my garage building and improving different storage techniques, testing again and again until I discovered a system to completely block harmful EMPs. Once I built it, I drew up plans so I could build more anytime I needed, all for materials I had around my house. My final step was to make sure I could protect my family from the social chaos and violence that will follow an EMP attack. I spoke with army rangers who have lived in war zones and in countries without functioning governments. They helped me create plans to recognize danger before it hits and turn my home into a fortress. I also had to learn how to find water and grow my own food, as that would be the biggest problem we'd face after the EMP attack. It was quite a journey of discovery, learning everything I'd need to know to take care of my family in those post-EMP times. Now I was able to finish building everything I need, and I can confidently say that I am 100% EMP-proof. It did take me a while to have my home completely ready so that I can survive just fine without electricity. But that was part of the learning process. I'm also set up to produce my own electricity in a way that isn't affected by an EMP so that I can use those things that won't be destroyed 
as well as the electronics I've got stashed away, protected to survive the EMP. Remember, it took me a long time, pain and trial and error, to finish my preparedness to survive an EMP and its aftermath. And I started worrying about other patriots when I started hearing about Obama's deal with Iran. Considering how he supported every Islamist who's trying to establish worldwide Sharia law, I didn't have good feelings about it. Shoot, he's even got an Iranian as one of his primary advisors. Not to count all the hundreds of Islamist appointists he's made to sensitive government posts. Actually, as much as I tried to fight it, a part of me is convinced that Obama is in on this whole scheme. I honestly believe there's a plan behind the curtains to keep our nation vulnerable, and maybe a long-term plan so that Obama's Islamist friends have the last laugh. But I will not permit it. Once my own family was prepared, it didn't take me more than a moment to decide that there were others who needed the same information that I had spent a couple of years digging up and putting into a simple, usable format. So I sat down at my computer and started devising a survival plan like nobody had ever seen before. I wanted it to be a simple, step-by-step -step plan so that I could share it with others and that it's simple to implement so anyone can do it. To be honest with you, when I started this research years ago, I wasn't thinking of turning it into a system. I was just thinking about taking care of my own family. But as Obama and Kerry started negotiating, and some of the news sources I trusted started talking about how bad the deal was, I realized that I had a greater responsibility. The responsibility of sharing what I've learned. The responsibility of saving at least some other good souls. Most people would probably rely on FEMA to be there to bail them out when the EMP event hits. But there would be a few people like you and I who know we cannot count on the government. We can only rely on ourselves. I also have a bigger cause. Every person that will survive the coming EMP attack will be a notch of success for the American way and a proof of failure for those spiteful Iranians who hate us and want us dead in a hysteria of violence and chaos. That's why I'm talking to you today. I've finished organizing a step-by-step -step plan, and I want you to start using it to protect your family. It's the best of what I know. I didn't hold anything back, compiling together into one easy-to-read and easy-to-use format. I give you specific action steps that you can take to make sure that your family is ready to live totally without external electrical power once the EMP hits. It's an astonishingly simple plan, a step-by-step -step blueprint where I take you by the hand to show you what you need to do right now to ensure that your family is safe and that your kids can continue to play, laugh, and grow healthy in front of your eyes, even during the EMP apocalypse that is nearing. And avoid the biggest mistake that keeps so many families vulnerable to this deadly threat. It's a complete, comprehensive, and detailed guide. That's why I'm calling it the Ultimate EMP Survival Plan. Inside, you'll find all the secrets and the knowledge that took me years of research and trial and error so that you can protect your home from the devastating effects of the EMP bomb the Iranians are planning to unleash on our unsuspecting nation, and even how to stay alive and even thrive after this EMP nuke blasts. Then, and only when you are completely prepared, you can feel the peace of mind that comes from knowing your family is truly protected from all kinds of human predators like murderers, rapists, and angry starving mobs. Let me take a minute to show you what this ultimate plan and comprehensive guide includes, module by module, so you can see exactly what you'll be able to do with all the information inside starting today. The first module is called Module 1, the 30-day foolproof plan to surviving an EMP event. I took out all the guesswork, eliminated any fluff, and I just give you in this module a complete plan so you can start doing simple actions today to stop being vulnerable when the EMP event happens. I show you what the first and most important action is, what to do on day one, week one, and every day for a few minutes a day so that when day 30 arrives, you'll be one of the very few people who will survive the EMP strike and will keep his or her family safe no matter what. In it, decades of knowledge are condensed into a simple step-by-step -step plan so that whenever you hear of Iran or any other rogue nation in the news, you can look at your family lovingly, then laugh at the worries you used to have because you know you did it, and you have kept them safe from those crazy people itching to end our way of life. Module 2, the Checklist of Electronics Vulnerability. This checklist will be your guide that you will use and refer to often. In it, I will give you a list of the most common electronics and share with you all the secrets on which ones can survive an EMP blast and which ones cannot. Then, whenever you're making a buying decision, you simply take a quick look at this checklist and choose an electronic that you can still use, even as the people out there look at each other confused why their home and business electronics stop suddenly working as the EMP takes them out. Module 3, the Evergreen Electricity Blueprint. Even after you use my checklist to focus your electronic purchases on what will work post-EMP, those electronics still won't work without electricity. In my Evergreen Electricity Blueprint, I show you exactly how to get your home independent from the electricity grid in a way that cannot be affected by an EMP. Then you and your family can continue enjoying the benefits of modernity while others out there go back to cavemen living. 
Just this will impress your family in ways that words cannot describe. Module 4, The Layman's Guide to Faraday Cages. As good as it is to only buy electronics that will survive an EMP, some of the most fun ones, like computers and televisions, simply cannot survive an EMP unless you put them inside a Faraday cage. However, there's a problem. If you go out there looking to buy a Faraday cage, it will cost you a ridiculous sum that is, in most cases, no less than $1,499 of your hard-earned cash. Of course, I help you save that money so you better use it to complete your preparations, and I include an idiot-proof guide to building your own Faraday cages on the cheap, even if you've never used a screwdriver in your life or were never known as a handy person. This module not only will save you thousands of dollars, you'll start already preparing for a better life of luxuries for your family post-EMP, and even learn a skill you can use to sell your own Faraday cages and make some good money on the side. Module 5, the Follow Along Repairs Manual. A problem with the appliances and vehicles we rely on to have a good comfortable life is that they break down. So when the EMP halts the whole economy of our nation, you will not find anyone you can trust to do those repairs for you. That's why I included a follow-along manual that is surprisingly simple and easy to do so that you can carry out any critical repairs fast and keep your family safe, happy, and proud of you. I even throw in some detailed step-by-step -step plans to make a number of critical appliances from scratch so that you'll have a good life post-EMP no matter what happens to your appliances. Module 6, The Impenetrable Home Formula. I debated whether to include this module or sell it as its own product, but I finally decided to include it in this package free of charge for now. The reason is simple. Once the EMP event hits and you are fully prepared, your house will be shining like a diamond at night, while houses all over the nation are covered in darkness. This will attract people to you post-EMP, unless you have a smart plan to avoid this danger. In this module, I share with you all the precautions you need to take in order to avoid being detected as someone who still has access to electricity post-EMP, as well as turn your home into a truly impenetrable fortress so that even if a mob decided to attack, they'll be as harmless to you and to your family as a fly banging its head repeatedly against your window. Even if the EMP event hits before 30 days from today, I won't leave you there not knowing what to do. Danger is approaching. Any day that passes significantly increases with it the risk of an EMP event happening. So I also include bonuses on things to do in order to survive an EMP, even if you are caught before you finish your preparations. These bonuses include Bonus 1. The Ultimate Food Blueprint This module is crucial. Once the EMP hits, stores will neither receive nor provide anyone with any food any longer. You'll be left alone, to your own devices, to get food once your stockpile is exhausted. But don't worry, I'm here and I've got you covered. In this module, I'm going to reveal everything there is to know about growing and getting your own food post-EMP so that you and your family can sleep with your bellies full every night. You deserve it because you worked hard, followed my ultimate plan, and did prepare for this. You were right. Bonus 2. The Amish Refrigeration Secrets This module will be the basis for your good life post-EMP. As you already know, food rots fast if not refrigerated, which will require you to always be working to get more and more food if you cannot safely store it. This module shows you just that. How to have more time to spend with your family and doing other things that are important to you by knowing how to refrigerate the food you have, grow, and get. This will be the difference between struggling every day and making your family so comfortable and happy they'll barely notice they're living post-EMP. Bonus 3. The Solar Cookery Solution If you're caught off guard with an EMP event or have any other electricity problems post-EMP, your family does not have to eat cold, raw food. They can have warm meals every day no matter what happens thanks to these little-known techniques and information that will make the sun do all the work cooking delicious meals for you. This module is one of my favorites, and very few people know what's included in it, so I recommend you print it out and keep it in a safe location so you can use it post-EMP. Bonus 4. The Whole Home Heating Formula Life is not good when you and your family are exposed to long, cold winters. It's often unbearable. That's why it's important to start preparing yourself to keep your family warm during winter when you have little or no access to electricity. In this module, I don't hold anything back. I share with you all the steps to ensure your home is well heated and how to do it in the ways that are so simple even someone inexperienced can do them fast. Bonus 5. The Abundant Water Plan Did you know that it only takes three days to die of thirst? Even less if you're on the run from angry mobs or exposed to the infernal heat of summer or the biting cold of winter and dehydration is one of the worst ways to die. Your organs shrivel up as your body pulls the water into your blood. Then every cell of your body starts to dry up and it hurts like you just got pummeled by Mike Tyson. Last, your brain shrinks until it's too small for your skull, and it pulls away and ruptures vital blood vessels. You die half crazy, suffering from the worst pain you've ever felt, and all that when you go less than three days without water. Don't let this happen to your family. 
Make sure you know how to properly find, extract, and store clean water. Trust me, when everyone around you is so thirsty that their own bodies are torturing them, you'll be glad you downloaded the Abundant Water Plan. It's worth printing three copies of this critical document, one to keep on you, one to keep with your family, and a third to store in a safe location. The truth is, the EMP event approaching will end life in America as we know it. People you know as being kind and sweet and caring will turn to beasts as ferocious and deadly as the most evil people you hear of. When people's stomachs are empty, their children died starving, and thirst is almost rendering them unconscious, there's no telling to what extent they'll go to save their lives and to get even for what happened to their families. That's why it's so critical that you do not stay vulnerable another day, even another hour or second. Your family is counting on you. They trust you, and nobody really cares about their fate as much as you do. It's not our choice, you and I, that we were born in these times when America is on the brink of collapse and chaos, surrounded by cruel enemies. However, it is our responsibility to not stay vulnerable. So I give you everything you need to protect yourself and your family in a step-by-step -step format. This good deal includes six main modules and five bonuses, each packed with life-saving information. You've got a complete EMP event survival system from A to Z, no stone left unturned. I could easily sell each part of this system for $97 each. That's more than $1,000 for the easiest and most comprehensive EMP survival system you'll be able to find. One that will save your life and the lives of your loved ones. So I decided that a more fair price would be closer to $250. That's a reduction of more than 75%. Think about it. Just $250 for the peace of mind of knowing that your family can depend on you to keep them safe during a crisis. That they will make it no matter what. Now I know that times have been tough the last few years with a recession and all. And $250 is still a lot of money. I'd hate to think that a real patriot wasn't able to protect his family because I priced this ultimate EMP survival plan too high. So I thought I'd price this whole system at a steal, a fair price of $97 for everything that's included. And within 30 days from now, you'll be completely prepared to survive an EMP attack while others will die that spent that money on a round of drinks. Then again, my heart got a bit soft and I started thinking of your children and what will happen to them when the hysterical mobs and human predators start killing, maiming, and raping the innocent people that they come across. So I decided to eliminate any price issues at all, and I'm pricing this system at the lowest price I can, the lowest it has ever been and ever will be, a crazy small investment of one payment of $37. That's only available for a short while. I'll probably increase this price significantly soon. So go for it now before it's too late. Download the complete Ultimate EMP Survival Plan now for just one payment of $37. You also get ClickBank's 60-day no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. If for any reason or no reason at all, you're not completely satisfied with what's in this system, just ask for a refund and you'll get 100% of your money back right away. No ifs or buts or questions asked. So if you still need time to decide, I would normally tell you to take your time because I'm so sure this is the right bulletproof plan and anything else out there cannot even compare. You'll end up coming back here for sure. However, all evidence is pointing to the fact that an EMP blast will hit us before we know it. You can take your time, but are you sure the Iranians are taking their time too? I recommend you go ahead and claim your copy of this system. Then, once this information is safe in your hands, if you change your mind at any point, you've got 60 days to get your money back. Just make sure you get it while there's still time. Download the complete Ultimate EMP Survival Plan now for just one payment of $37. The truth is that the worst part of the EMP apocalypse is not the physical harm that the angry mob and human predators will inflict upon those who have stayed unprepared. The worst part is the feeling of guilt. Guilt that you could have prepared now while there was still a bit of time, but didn't. Guilt that your family counted on you, but you didn't really do all you could. Guilt that you've been warned of this impending colossal doom, and what did you do about it? Now it's decision time, and this could be the most important decision of your life. You're at a crossroads right now, and you've really got just two options. Option one is for you to leave this page. Ignore that feeling deep in your heart that you need to do something. Go back to that feeling of unsafety, that there's an unexpected and unknown danger awaiting you and your family right now. A life where every time you see your son or daughter, you wonder what will happen to them. Where you fill up your stockpile and stash away medicine, not realizing that you're missing out on the most important piece of the survival puzzle. Where you are vulnerable to a sudden EMP blast, and then end up seeing your family getting scared, hungry, and beaten, or worse, in front of your own eyes. You can do that if you want to. But if you've watched this far into this presentation, you know what you're doing now doesn't give you 100% preparedness and doesn't give you 100% peace of mind. You can feel yourself desiring to ensure your family is safe no matter what happens, and you and your family deserve that. Which brings us to option two, the intelligent choice. Take one tiny action today that will have an incredible impact on the rest of your life. Simply click the button below right now, enter your credit card information, 
and dive into the ultimate EMP survival plan. Especially check first the 30-day plan to be 100% safe and prepared. Feel the peace of mind settling inside you as you have a truly bulletproof plan. End your vulnerability and set aside the fears that are truly preventing you from giving your family all your love in its purest form, free of worries and concerns. Again, all you have to do is click the button below. Download the complete Ultimate EMP Survival Plan now for just one payment of $37. If you're still here, you probably have a few questions. Let me take a second to answer the most common questions I hear about the Ultimate EMP Survival Plan. Is my order safe? Your order is absolutely, positively safe, secure, and guaranteed. It's processed through the big prestigious ClickBank, which uses the same anti-hacker software that huge financial institutions and credit card companies rely on. It's one of the safest sites on the Internet. How do I read it? You'll get the system as 10 PDFs, which means you can read it on your computer, a smartphone, tablet, or e-reader, or you can print it out and read it anywhere you like, even post-THSTF EMP event. The benefit of using these PDFs rather than a regular paper and ink book is that it keeps the price low so that more people can afford it. Is the EMP apocalypse really going to happen? Listen, I absolutely and completely believe it will happen, and soon. If you pay attention, our country is run by a president and a gang of unpatriotic un-American crooks who will sell their own mothers for a few pennies. They'll probably get an early warning and fly in their private jets to some luxury resort abroad, while the terrorists have their way with our country, ending life as we know it. Will this guide really keep my family safe? Yes. All you need to do is take action on the simplest steps laid down in it. My question to you is, now that you know the risks and dangers of an EMP attack, can you afford not to be prepared for this very likely scenario? What if I'm not happy with the system? If you're not happy, you can get 100% of your money back, no questions asked. But I'm so sure and certain that you'll be happy with the ultimate EMP survival plan that I have no fear promising what I know it delivers and guarantees satisfaction. It's truly the difference between helplessly watching your family suffer during an EMP disaster and being their protector no matter what. Click the button below to invest in the ultimate EMP survival plan and get 100% safe, protected, and prepared. Get the complete ultimate EMP survival plan now for just one payment of $37.